Hey you guys, this is Charizard Morgan from the Treasure Within Coaching and I'm going to be going through some of this book, The New Rules of Marriage by Terence Real. I have taken a few of his courses and am preparing to work with couples. I want to share with you some of the juicy tidbits in this book. Let's begin. So today I'll be summarizing chapter one of the book. And the question really is, why are relationships so difficult? It's that we want more out of relationships than we ever did. It used to be that men and women got married for companionship, to raise the kids, the man made the money, the woman raised the kids, they worked on the farm or whatever. However, society has changed. Women have become masculinized, I guess you could say. Actually, that's just not even true. It's just that we are we started taking on the roles of what traditionally was considered men's work, right? Making money. We became independent, start making our own money. And along with that, we started demanding that men become what was considered traditionally feminine, feminized, the world of emotions and feelings. We wanted our men to share their feelings and honor our feelings. The problem is that traditionally men have been punished for having feelings. They were called wimps and sissies. So we have ended up with a whole world of men closed off to their emotions from the time they were children not even realizing it and not knowing how to access it. So what has happened is whereas women used to like bite their tongue, bite their lips, just put up with, repress their unhappiness in their marriage or not even feel like they had a right to happiness in a marriage, when women became empowered, they started adopting a new attitude as one male client once described, women would be saying, I was weak, now I'm strong, go screw yourself. And women started becoming kind of mouthy and obnoxious. So what do we need? We don't need more personal empowerment. We need relational empowerment. And that's why I really like the work of Terry Real and why I'm taking his courses because this is about learning relational skills, which none of us have learned because did your parents have a healthy relationship? Do you see it in movies? Besides the temporary romance of the courtship and the initial two years and the wedding, where do we ever see modeled how people navigate challenges, disagreements, repair their relationships after they're triggered, deal with their own reactivity. Where do we learn that? Well, that's what this book is about. And that's what relational life therapy is about. And that's what I'm studying. But let's continue with the book. So um, I'm just going to read a little bit from this book is that relational empowerment is not about being right. It's not about being self-expressed, like, oh, I'm just going to tell you this because I feel like it. And it's not about control. It asks these questions. How are we going to be together in a way that works for both of us? How are we going to negotiate our needs? When there is conflict or hurt, how are we going to move back into loving connection? Relationship empowerment asks both partners to verbalize. This is what I'd like. Tell me what you'd like. And tell me what you need from me to help you deliver. Okay, it's very different, relational. So now I want to say one more thing. And this kind of also goes in line with the videos I've been making lately about... Um, the guys on the dating apps who just want to slide it in, get laid, like their idea of a woman is just sexual. 
whereas a healthy relationship has so many more parts. And this is what I want to share with you now. Real intimacy occurs when two or more mature individuals choose to share themselves with one another. Sharing is a process of connection that occurs in the five areas of human experience, intellectual, emotional, physical, sexual, and spiritual. So let's go through what all, some of these are because, you know, if you've been on online dating apps like I have, or just having men slide into your DMs or whatever, they're just looking for one of these five components. They're not looking for intellectual or emotional connections or spiritual connections. They want sexual connections. So I think that we've forgotten about all the different types of connections. So if any, this is especially for the men. I want you guys to listen, but all of you and all of us, me included, what all has to be there in a connected relationship. Let's talk about the intellectual. In the intellectual domain, you would enjoy sharing your thoughts with your partner, your ambitions, concerns, questions, and insights. You would feel stimulated by his response and also by what he shared of his own thoughts and reflections. You would respect each other's thinking, whether you agreed or not, feeling curious rather than judgmental. You will become dissatisfied if your partner dismisses your thoughts, like having he has a problem with receiving, or if he has trouble sharing his own, a problem with transmitting. Okay, let's go into the spiritual. When a couple shares spiritually, they share ideals, values, and a sense of purpose. They share dedication to some higher good beyond their personal concerns. Such a shared value could be spiritual in the religious sense, but it could also be dedication to art, a political belief, charity, mentoring, or raising children. Relational empowerment helps us understand that if I win and you lose, we both lose in the long run. Uh, let's talk about the physical sharing. Physical sharing means hugs and holding each other in non-sexual ways. But it also extends to all sorts of physical care, such as exercise, shared health concerns, and sharing physical space building a house together, or even bringing flowers into a room. Okay, so we've talked about intellectual, spiritual, physical. Now let's do sexual. Sexual sharing simply means giving and receiving erotic pleasure, teaching each other how to be good lovers, which requires each partner to be neither overly selfish and ungiving, or nor overly selfless and unreceptive. Okay, so that means um, sexually, it means that, you know, that's why these like random hookups aren't really that healthy either, because in a healthy sexual relationship, you are discussing with each other what you like, getting to know each other sexually, and then also you're not selfish, that means you're giving. And you're not selfless. In other words, you also want to receive. Some of us, I sometimes have trouble with the receiving part. And that means that I am being too selfless. Okay, so you can't be too selfish or too selfless. However, the one I say for last, the one he talks about last, is emotional intimacy. And that is the most challenging one. And that's why a lot of people don't want relationships. Because <laughs> they, they don't want to deal with the most difficult part of all. Of all the domains of intimacy, the one that couples find most difficult is emotional sharing. 
And nothing better illustrates the conundrum for both sexes than when women try to have 21st century relationships with 20th century guys. 20th century guys were taught the traditional masculinity commandment, thou shalt not be vulnerable. That's weak. That's what makes men have such a hard time listening emphatically to their partners. They just want women to stop being so emotional. How can you tenderly respond to vulnerable feelings in your partner, guys, let alone openly share your own if you view, view vulnerability as nothing but a flaw? And while younger men, yes, <laughs> I do like younger men. And while younger men may find this issue less difficult than those born earlier in the 20th century, men of all ages still struggle, still see strength and emotional vulnerability as being mutually exclusive. And by the way, so do many women. I can't tell you the number of men who complain that when they finally do open up and show vulnerability to their partners, they're suddenly viewed as wimps. However, I would also say there are also women who have difficulty with their emotions. And I want to say that just as much as there are men who have difficulty showing their emotions, there are women who are um, super bitchy and critical uh, as well. And that even for um, when men do open up, that some women still remain angry, angry and critical. They have trouble receiving. So there are a lot of relationship patterns. Like this whole freaking world needs to wake up and learn how to be relational. And that's what I love about this work. By Terry Real. The bar has been raised by women. And as most of the men I work with readily understand, the bar has also been raised by our children. Virtually every man I talk to wishes to be a better dad to his kids than his own dad was to him. More involved, more understanding, more connected. And we can't do that from behind a wall. The people we love want more from us, both as husbands and as fathers, than our paychecks. They need our open hearts. Um, okay, so that was chapter one. And then in the book, he has a um, chapter one practice session. So this is really good. This is where you get to do some practice. So the first part, he gives, lets you do a relationship inventory for these five areas of intellectual, emotional, physical, sexual, and spiritual. And for each one, you can rate yourself from a scale of one to five, how well you do with transmitting this and receiving this, both for yourself, your partner, and your relationship. So here is an example from the spiritual, you can see a scoring sheet. I really recommend you get this book so you can do all the exercises. Then there's a second experiment called the magic wand. You get to imagine your ideal relationship and what you would change to get the relationship you want. You get to dream and ask for what you really want rather than trying to be okay with or angry with what you have. The magic wand exercise. The next exercise is the feelings check-in. Uh, it's to carry around a notebook and note throughout the day and stop throughout the day and notice how you're feeling so you can learn to feel and notice your feelings and identify your feelings. This is particularly for the men or women who were, who were her just walled off. And here are the seven primary emotions, joy, pain, anger, fear, shame, guilt, love. So you write those uh, in your journal uh, just to start noticing throughout the day how you're feeling. Finally, he recommends a dream journal. So when you wake up in the morning, you write down your dream, not just your dream, but the emotions you had with it. The idea being that in your waking state, you may be repressing emotions that you can feel in your dream state to just start being aware of your emotions. And that completes chapter one. I'm going to be making a separate video for each chapter as I go through them. I read this book once, but I'm 
and I'm going to be reading it again and I will make a separate video for each chapter of the book. Um, I also, just in case you're curious, I'm going to start making my coaching type videos here in front of this beautiful lotus painting that I bought on Etsy. So beautiful because um, this is my meditation room. This is also the room in which I see my escort clients. <laughs> um, and the lotus is just signifying light and love because we are born to be light and love. But why is it so freaking hard? Because the world of pain is what we came from and we have to learn how to be relational and learn a whole new set of skills, um, which we can do. So just remembering we want to come from light and love. And thank you so much for watching my video. Again, the book is The New Rules of Marriage by Terrence Real. Thank you for watching my video.